So that's the only pole we are going to hit right here. I'm not against poles, I really like poles. Germany is close to Poland, but we really need to hit this eye right here, this, this pole. <laughs> Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Once again, it's time for... Hurt yourself, they said. Oh, my fucking foot. That's going to get you many views, they said, and many subscribers. I hope this does work out. I have to sacrifice myself here in order for me to get some attention. So. Welcome back to Papa Flemish Random Week, number two. And we are going to do some more complex analysis today. It's a really nice topic and I want you guys to get used to this topic. It's really fun. Just some simple examples here. And you might recognize this integral if you are a subscriber of Tibby's, Toby Handy, link in the description. I made a collaboration video with her where I already solved this integral. But I want to give it a shot on my channel on my own today too. So let's go ahead and get started. Talking about complex analysis, what do we have to do? Well, at first we have to introduce a little complex valued function. So let's say we have a function f of z, and this is just equal to natural log squared of z over z squared plus one. But what is z squared plus one? That's nothing but z squared negative i squared. And that's just the difference of two squares, so we can break this up into natural log squared of z. That looks quite cool, so you don't have that all day long. That's that's quite cool. Cool natural log squared <laughs> over and now let's break this up. Difference of two squares, z plus i times z negative i. And you see, we can immediately take a look at the poles of this thing right here. Simple poles at that. We have poles at z one and two being equal to plus minus i. I hope you can see where this comes from. So plus i here and negative i here. Okay, cool. And we also have to introduce a proper contour in the complex plane. So at first we have this arc right here. Let's call it gamma for example. And this thing goes from negative r to r down here on the real axis. But also we have to consider something. We have this natural log squared right here of z. But what would happen if our z would go to zero? Well, our function would explode to negative infinity in this case. We don't want that, so we really have to avoid this zero right here with some little semicircle with radius of epsilon. And you see that also means this goes from negative epsilon to epsilon. Okay, nice and cool. Now we can formulate our whole formula for this contour integral. So on the one hand, we have this contour integral of f of z, dz, being equal to the sum of the residues, sum of the residues of our f of z. But what exactly are our, oh no, I forgot, 2 pi times i. Don't forget that, that's really important. But what is exactly our residues? Well, we are only dealing with i right here in the upper half of the complex plane. So that's the only pole we are going to hit right here. I'm not against poles. I really like poles. Germany is close to Poland, but we really need to hit this eye right here, this, this pole. <laughs> so um, what's the formula for our residues? Well, the residue of f of z at z being equal to i is nothing but the limit. And this only holds because it's a simple pole. When z approaches i, z negative i, times our f of z in this case, which is nothing but natural log squared of z over z plus i times z negative i. And you see, this and that is going to cancel out. Taking the limit wouldn't pose any problems. So let's just plug the values for our z in. So we have natural log squared of i over 2 times i. But what exactly is natural log squared of i? Well, this is the natural log of i, but the whole thing squared. But what is natural log of i? Well, if we take a look at the complex plane, i is up here. So you know what a complex number looks like. Complex number z is nothing but r times e to the i phi, where r is our length of the vector. And we are on the unit circle right here, so this is just going to be one. And in order for us to get to our i, well, we have to get an angle of pi over 2 right here. That's our phi. So that also means that i is nothing but e 
to the i times pi over 2, taking the natural log on both sides, also means that the natural log of i is nothing but, and we are only going to take a look at the principal branch, the principal log. Natural log of i is nothing but natural log, and e is going to cancel out, so i times pi over 2, QDO, we can plug this in, so we end up with i times pi over 2, but the whole thing squared over 2i. Well, this is just going to be pi squared over 4. So we have pi squared over 4. i squared is negative 1 over 2 times i. So all in all, this is going to evaluate to negative pi squared over 8 times i. And we can plug this stuff in. So, let's move on. Um, you see, this i and this i is going to cancel out. I just plugged everything in. And this 2 and this 8 is going to cancel out to 1 fourth. And we can bring this pi together right here. So we end up with negative pi to the third power over 4. Coolio. But also our contour is equal to the integrals of those four parts right here. This gamma, this epsilon thing right here. We are going to call it capital lambda. I don't know. And those little parts right here. So let's plug this in. So we now have this gamma integral plus our lambda integral plus an integral going from negative r to negative epsilon of, you see, we are riding along, giving this a little ride, the real number line, so we can just turn this f of z into f of x once again. We are only dealing with real values of x. So that means we have natural log squared of x over x squared plus 1 dx plus, well, the counterpart right here from epsilon to r of natural log squared of x, same argumentation right here using x now, over x squared plus 1 dx. And you see, we could bring those integrals together if those were just epsilon and r. How could we change this upper and lower bound right here? Kind of changing the sign, well, by introducing a little substitution. So let's say we are going to transform x into a negative x. That also means that dx is nothing but negative dx. You can also call it u and then back to x if this confuses you. I just like this notation right here. So now we have gamma integral plus capital lambda integral plus an integral going from using negative values right here, negative, negative, positive. So from r to epsilon, and now we have natural log squared of negative x right here over, and now negative x squared is just x squared plus 1 dx plus an integral going from oh, negative dx. Don't forget negative, we have made this change of variable from epsilon to r. Natural log squared of x over x squared plus 1 dx. And well, using this negative sign right here, we can actually change the upper and lower bounds, changing the order right here. So this is already quite, quite good because we have the same denominator, we have the same upper and lower bounds, so let's bring those integrals together a little bit. And also, natural log squared of negative x is natural log of negative x, but squared. And this is natural log of negative 1 times x. You see, and we can use the natural log property to break this up a little bit. So we end up with an integral. Gamma plus integral lambda plus integral going from epsilon to r of. Now we have this right here. So we have natural log of negative 1 plus the natural log of x, but squared plus natural log squared of x over x squared plus 1 dx. The natural log of negative 1, well, once again, let's take a look at the complex plane right here. So our r, our radius of the vector, is once again just 1. And to get to negative 1, we have to have an angle of pi. So we end up with natural log of negative 1 being equal to i times pi. You can plug this into here. And once again, just taking a look at the principal branch, principal log. So i times pi. And now we can square this thing right here. In the video with Tibis, Tibis, I actually made a little mistake right here. I forgot it too. I'm not going to do this today. So let's do it properly. <laughs> so we end up with gamma integral plus lambda integral plus. So we have something, so epsilon to r, 
something over x squared plus 1. So the first part is just natural log squared of x. The other one, this is going to be negative pi squared. And in the middle, we are going to end up with 2 times i times pi times natural log of x. Plus 2 times i times pi times natural log of x plus our natural log squared of x dx. Coolio, and you see those are the same, we can bring them together. So we have this term, uh, that looks fucking ugly. Two times, okay, nice. And well, we are going to deal with this integrand in a second, but I want to go through some little thought process. To go back to our original integral, kind of. So you see, if we just um, split this up, we are going to end up with our original integral times two. <laughs> so in order for us to get to this point, we need to let epsilon approach zero in the limit and r2 approach infinity in the limit. I hope you can see where this comes from. So let's end its miserable life by fucking it to death. Fuck them all to death! the South Park reference. So, like I said, we want to take the limit as epsilon goes to zero and r goes to infinity. And the good thing is, on this side right here, well, that's just constant. Taking a limit of a constant is just going to result in a constant itself. So, the limit doesn't affect this thing. Hooray! <laughs> but it does affect this side right here. On the one hand, we have those upper and lower bounds going to zero or infinity, res respectively. And those two right here, as a matter of fact, go to zero. The gamma integral is r approaches infinity and the lambda integral as epsilon goes to zero. I have done this many times before. Watch my other complex analysis videos or just make use of Jordan's lemma right here. Doesn't quite matter. So just do some approximations. Find an upper bound, for example, and you are going to notice that this indeed goes to zero. Both of them go to zero. Just introduce substitution, triangle inequality, reverse triangle inequality. Watch my other videos. Just do it. As a matter of fact, those go to zero. You can trust Papa on that. <laughs> so that also means our contour integral of f of z d z is nothing but negative pi to the third power over four being equal to. Now we have two times the integral going from zero to infinity of natural log squared of x over x squared plus one dx. Right here we have negative pi over two integral from zero to infinity dx over x squared plus 1 and also plus and I have brought those constants to the outside too i times 2 pi integral from 0 to infinity natural log of x over x squared plus 1 dx and you might notice something really cool I have done a video on that right here it was called an Euler experience this video right here is actually the most elegant proof I know of to show that this thing is indeed 0 we are going to I'll uh, talk about this in a second. In the previous video, this week, we have also shown that this thing right here evaluates to pi over 2. So this whole thing actually is negative pi to the third power over 2. So it's cool that we have shown that this is indeed the case right here. So let's rewrite this all a little bit. So we end up with negative pi to the third power over 4. And allow me to add this value on both sides. So positive pi to the third power over 2. You can advance this fraction actually by 2 over 2. And you see this is just going to evaluate all in all to pi to the third power over 4. Okay, and this whole chunk is now equal to. Let me get this right here. Oh my goodness, so much stuff lying around here. Oh. That's disgusting. <laughs> okay, so we now have this right here. Two times and let's call this thing i because that's the thing we wanted to evaluate. Plus i times two times pi integral from zero to infinity natural log of x over x squared plus one dx. And now we can divide both sides by two right here. It's not equal to zero, so this by two to isolate our i. This by two, that's going to cancel out and this is going to evaluate to eight. We don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> My chalkboard is a fucking mess right now. And you see, 
If we just compare coefficients, you could say, real and imaginary part, we are going to get the actual value for our i right here. I hope you can already see this. So you see, the real part of our contour, f of z, dz is nothing but, well, the real part of this thing right here, so pi to the third power over a. But this also is our i right here, so that's the real part. It doesn't have any i that would imply that it's the imaginary part. So this right here is i and that's what we wanted to find out actually. But also as a little side effect, we can take a look at the imaginary part of this thing. And well, my chalk, it's, it makes me go crazy. <laughs> you see, imaginary part right here, this is zero times i, so the imaginary part is exactly zero. And this is nothing but this chunk right here pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x over x squared plus 1 dx. And you see we can just divide both sides by this integral right here and then we have indeed shown that pi is equal to 0. That's the craziest proof number theory you might have seen. <laughs> no. What we can actually do, we can divide both sides by pi right here. It's not equal to 0. <laughs> So we are going to end up with zero being equal to the Euler experience right here. Zero to infinity, natural log of x over x squared plus one dx. And this fact is actually quite cool. So that's a really elegant way to show that this is indeed true. But our main boy for today was this right here. We have found it out. And I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel everywhere. Please share my videos everywhere. I would highly appreciate it. Sharing is caring. It helps grow the channel. If you also want to support the channel a bit more, you can buy my stupid ass t-shirts right here or this formula fucking stupid ass pun. And you can also support me on Patreon, for example. But you don't have to. But if you want me to bring out videos frequently, then I invite you to support the channel. And I love you guys, appreciate you, and up until the next video. Uh, we didn't have that. Have a Grundpraktikum day, absorption and better radiation. See ya.